Good morning and welcome to our worship service this morning. We are delighted to have you tune in with us. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, starting with the 51st chapter, verses 1 to 6. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation. For a teaching will go out from me and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for this Sunday is Psalm 138. 
This is the Psalm of David. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O oh Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second reading is from Romans, the 12th chapter, beginning with the first verse. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassion in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Haiti will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom, 
and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I remember almost two years ago now when I came up to Reno to interview with the call committee, and somehow we had a conversation about fires, and I remember them telling me that there were times when the smoke got so bad in the valley from the fires in California that things would get very hazy. And if people had any respiratory issues, they needed to stay inside. I remember hearing that, but not really thinking about how weird it would be to drive to church and not to be able to see the mountains or the hills or anything that was bigger than what was right in front of me here in the valley. It's one thing to hear about how smoky it can get, but it's another thing to actually live it and have the scratchy throat and the watery eyes and to have school canceled and to wonder if we will have to cancel outdoor worship service on Sunday or if we will just work to keep it short and sweet. By the way, I'm recording this on Friday, so I don't really know how Sunday is going to turn out. But living in this week with all of this smoke in the air is a different experience than reading about it on the internet or in the newspapers. It's been different than simply hearing about one of you tell me what it's like the last time this happened. You sort of have to be in it to know how nasty it really is. But isn't that true for most things? And um, isn't it true of things that we learned in school? You can read all about it, but when you experience it, it's a whole different ball game. You can read all the parenting books that you can get your hands on while you're pregnant, but when they put the baby in your arms, it's totally different than what you might expect. I think in our gospel lesson for today, Jesus is transitioning the disciples. They are starting the slow process of moving from followers into leaders of the movement that will be created after Jesus leaves this earth. But they are doing this, as Jesus is doing this with them, he is not giving them any indication of what is to come. And they have no idea how this whole story is actually going to play out. Listening to Jesus is one thing, but being the church, a completely different thing. But Jesus begins their transition by asking the question, who do people say that I am? There's nothing tricky about this question. The disciples know what people are saying. It's an easy conversation to have with Jesus. Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, Others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. The disciples know this answer. They knew what people were saying, and perhaps depending on where they were coming from and their own points of view, they may have even agreed with some of this. But the second question that Jesus asks is a little bit harder, and Jesus knows it. But it's time to really start the disciples getting to process what they've been experiencing and learning with Jesus. And after all of the lessons, all of the teachings, all of the miracles, all of the talk, and all of the speculation, it's time to take everything and put it together with what they've seen and what they've heard and start making sense of what it means for them. Who do you say? that I am, he asked them. This is the kind of question that I would imagine would probably be hanging there for a few moments. Who do you say that I am? Think about this for a moment. 
Maybe it's a good thing that we're doing online church today because I would have the, the idea to turn to you and ask you all to answer this question. And what would you say? I would hope that many of us would say that Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is the one who was sent by God to take our sins to the cross so that we can be in a right relationship with God and receive the promise of life forever with God. But while most of us would say that and speak about his life, his death, and his resurrection, there's also the reality that many of us have had different experiences with Jesus. And while we've studied his word and we know his teachings, there are different aspects of Jesus that we have maybe found important for our personal faith journey. For example, if we have come through a difficult time or a difficult illness, we might lean into the fact that Jesus is our healer. If we've been able to mend a hard relationship or a difficult relationship that we've had with someone, then maybe we think of him in terms of one who reconciles and brings peace and people together. If we've been hungry, and we've been praying for food, then maybe Jesus is our provider. If we've ever been outside of anything, then maybe he is the one who welcomes us into the family of God. If we love the outdoors or being in nature, then maybe we experience him as the king of kings over all creation. Or maybe he's our good shepherd, or the light when we are struggling in dark times. You understand what I'm saying, I hope. How we define and explain who Jesus is may very well be based on how we've experienced him ourselves. I imagine that answering this question was harder for the disciples than we might think. How would they take everything that they've witnessed and put it into words? Maybe for them there was a moment or two of silence where they shuffled their feet and tried to avoid eye contact, as so many great students do, right? Or maybe they took a few minutes to really think about who Jesus is. And then Peter has the answer. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And he gets it right. His answer is spot on, and Jesus praises him and blesses him for answering correctly. But yet, even as Peter answers, I really wonder if he knows what he is saying. The Messiah, sure, he knew what that meant. His people had been waiting for the one who had been promised since the days of the prophets. Son of the living God, yes, it was clear that Jesus was from God and that his presence in the world meant that God was active and working after what had been a period of 400 years of silence as no prophet spoke on God's behalf. Jesus is the reminder that God is still at work and still alive and well. But I'm not entirely sure that, Jesus, that Peter understood the full scope of what Jesus was doing. Yet one of the things that Jesus says reminds me that sometimes it doesn't necessarily matter if we have the full story or if we can see the full vision that God has set before us. Because Simon Peter's answer didn't necessarily come from Simon Peter. No, the answer came from God. God revealed to Simon Peter just who Jesus was. Peter's confession came from the revelation that God had given to him. Friends, this brings me comfort because sometimes I think we stop ourselves from speaking about our faith because we are unsure. Maybe we aren't sure exactly how to define Jesus' importance in our lives or even how to articulate why our faith and our church is so important to us. We hesitate to answer questions like, who do you say that I am? Because we don't want to be wrong or to have people think that we're foolish 
or because we want to keep it a private matter between us and God. And friends, I get that. But there are times, especially right now, when there is so much happening in our world, when people need us to speak up and share what we know. There are people who need to know about Jesus and who he is and what he has brought to this world and what he can bring to their lives. And these are things that we know. We know how Jesus has been with us since before we were baptized. We know how Jesus has brought us through difficult times. We know how Jesus has helped us. We know the people that Jesus has sent to guide us and shepherd us along the way. We know how Jesus has worked in our lives. And if he's been at work in our lives, then of course he works in the lives of our friends and our loved ones too. Friends, sometimes we get stuck in the things that we don't know. We want the details. We want the full story. We want to be able to articulate it as best as we possibly can. But when push comes to shove, what needs to be shared is who is Jesus for you? The book smart stuff is helpful. Don't get me wrong, but our experiences with Jesus are just as important as they too form our faith. And there are times, just like the disciples, when we are called to articulate it. When our friend needs us to speak about God's healing power. When our friend needs to know that Christ is with them, that they are not alone in this dark time. And just like Peter, there will be times like this week when we will get it very right. And next week we will see that Peter gets it very wrong. But we are still called to speak and share what we know. Peter didn't have all of the information when he made his confession. He didn't. But yet, still, he made the confession. And he got it very right. His name was changed from Simon to Peter the Rock, the foundation that the church would be built on. He was given the keys to the kingdom. And there was no way that he understood what any of that meant. But there was something in him that Jesus recognized to be important for the mission of the church. For Jesus' message to continue beyond Jesus' life here on earth. There were gifts that Peter had that he would, need, would be needed to further the mission of this church. And frankly, that's still true. The gifts, God's people, the gifts of God's people are still needed today to further the mission of the church here and now. I know we stop ourselves from offering our gifts because we worry that we don't have enough knowledge. But the problem isn't what we don't know. Maybe the problem is, is that we don't know how to take what we know and make it practical. Maybe we don't talk about Jesus among our friends and neighbors because we simply don't have enough practice to do so. So this week, I give you a challenge. I give you a challenge to speak with someone, whether it's someone that you call from the church who's a good friend, or whether it's someone in your own home or a member of your family or a friend across the country. Call them and ask them to talk with you about how you can speak the name of Jesus and speak what you know about him. Practice it. Who is Jesus to you? What has God revealed to you about the nature and the love of Jesus? Yes, I know it's one thing to read all about it, and it's another thing to really experience and put it to words. But I remind you, that in this time in our world, our friends need us to speak about this Jesus who loves us, who is compassionate, who brings healing, who brings peace, who brings light to the darkness, who forgives sins and makes us right with God. Amen.
faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, our Rock, you are our foundation in Jesus Christ, your Son, whom we confess as the living God. Prepare your Church for its mission in bearing witness to Christ, both here at home and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. There are so many fires burning at this time, and while we know that the rebirth of your creation will come out of it, this time is difficult for so many. We pray that you would protect from harm those who are fighting the fires. We pray that you would comfort those who are grieving losses of homes, possessions, and loved ones. We pray that you would give peace to those who are frightened, and that you would be present for all who are impacted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. Direct the leaders of countries, legislators and magistrates, mayors and councils to walk in your ways. Help leaders regard those in need with mercy and fulfill your loving purposes in the governance of peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us, deliver us, and fulfill your purpose for us. According to your steadfast love, grant healing and wholeness to those who are bereaved, in trouble or adversity, or sick or in need of care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call us into this community of Holy Cross, in which we, though many, are one in Christ, May we recognize in ourselves and in one another you the unique gifts you have given us for the building up of your church for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you, O oh God, to continue to bring healing for all who continue to struggle with COVID-19. We pray that you would strengthen all of those nurses, doctors, and medical workers who work so hard to help patients and families. We ask for wisdom for our teachers and administrators as they return to teaching their students. Protect all essential workers, especially our police, first responders, and our military from harm, and give them your protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are the everlasting rock from which we were hewn, and you restore your people to joy and gladness. In blessed memory and hope, we thank you for the lives of our beloved dead. Bring us with them to our heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us join together and pray as the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
As you go this week, may you know that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Thank you.